Hey guys, what's going on? Glove Save Gaming back here with another video. Um, if you didn't check out my last video, we took a break from the Kansas City franchise mode and did a 2022 playoff bracket uh, with updated rosters. It was definitely uh, pretty interesting to see how some teams did um, that were in, not that were in the playoffs. All of them were in the playoffs this past season just to see how similar it was um, to the actual playoff bracket. Um, that just ended a couple months ago with Colorado taking home the Stanley Cup. Um, so I was really excited to do that kind of video. Uh, definitely go and check it out. And please like and subscribe my channel if you haven't yet. And we're back, though, with the Kansas City uh, franchise mode. Uh, season 7, I believe, of 10. Uh, we've only been able to make the playoffs one time. Uh, made the conference finals. Uh, definitely a really good run there. Thought we were going to be able to take home the Cup. Um, go on a magical run, but we fell a little bit short uh, finishing in the top four. We did have a pretty interesting offseason, had some pretty big name UFAs um, that we are looking to lock back up. One of them, Dougie Hamilton, um, he's on a one year deal, six and a half million dollars, still 86 overall. Thought it was worth the risk. Uh, probably going to score a lot of goals. Think he had around 23 last year, I want to say. Okay, 19. He had 22 the year before. Um, but I still don't mind giving $6.5 million to a guy uh, who can score like that, especially on the back end. We signed Ryan Johansson, uh, fourth-line center, two-year two deal, $2 million bucks. Uh, he's coming off that deal where he's making $8 million, basically overpaid for the in entirety of it. You can see here, even by his point production, um, that he hasn't been really good. Guess Montreal traded for him midway through that contract. Um, but he's looking to rebound. Uh, the 35-year-old, the fourth-line center behind a very young uh, center core uh, led by Matt Savoie. Uh, we also signed Ronnie Attard, one-year deal, uh, $1.725 million, I believe. He's going to be kind of the seventh, eighth D. Uh, we brought in Connor Clifton in a two-year deal at eight hundred k. Um, definitely need that defense depth if we want to make some noise and uh, be good in the playoffs. Uh, we signed Travis Sanheim, two-year deal, $6.2 million a year. I believe he's under thir He's 31. I was going to say under 30, but he's 31. Not too bad. Now, even if he goes dips a little bit, 87, don't think $6 million um, is too bad to give him. Uh, Alex Formanton, he was a pretty big name UFA, 86 overall, only wanted uh, th around $3 million. Uh, thought we'd go in at about three and a half, and he's coming here. Last season, he had 23 goals. Sorry, two seasons, two seasons ago, he had 23 goals with the Senators. Um, hopefully that he can make an impact. Believe he'll be playing um, second line left wing, uh, but I'm not 100% sure how I laid out the lines. I'll show you guys that in a bit. Uh, Macklin Celebrini, a uh, two-year deal, $1.5 million. Medium elite potential, still 21 years old. Has been yet to really break out. He had a really good season two seasons ago. Um, fell behind last year with only 16 points. Hoping he can take a step this season. Um, and our goaltending looks brand new uh, this year. Uh, but actually, we have a familiar face, but he never played a game as a Kansas City Husky the first time he was here, I believe. Oh, he did. So I guess he, he played the end of that season. For some reason, I thought he didn't play a game. So he's back. Dan Vladar is back in Kansas City. He'll be the backup. We signed him on a two-year deal at $1.5 million, And we traded, or sorry, we signed Vili Husso uh, to a four-year deal at $4.25 mil per season. Had a really good season last year, split between Vegas and Edmonton. And as you can see here, young stud goalie Noah Valley is no longer in Kansas City. Uh, after two rough seasons, I decided that I didn't really want him anymore. Thought I would go in a different direction. It took me such a long time to figure out a trade. Because some of these young goalies like Kosa and Wallstead, Askarov, uh, this, those respective teams just weren't biting and wouldn't trade them. Um, so our only trade of the offseason, we sent Noah Valley uh, to the LA Kings. And we also sent Clark Caswell, who's an 82 uh, high top six forward. Uh, and we, we got stud defenseman Brant Clark back. 85 overall, medium elite. Um, I'm really a fan of Brant Clark's game. i um, excited to see what he can actually do with L.A. once uh, he makes the team. You can see here his stats. He's only got 22 points in 127 NHL games. 
hoping he can turn that around. And then we also acquired in that deal Casper Kapanen. He's got one year left at 1.885. He will be playing on the fourth line right wing, hoping to generate some speed and hopefully that he can score some goals. And we're going to flip over to our lines now. You guys can take a look how I've got it set up. Um, I believe that Macklin, Celebrini, Ronnie Attard, and Connor Clifton are, are the three scratches. Um, so Formington will be playing on the third line, actually, I was saying a second before. I actually really like the forward core, how it's set up. I'm really surprised Adrian Kempe also jumped to an 89 from an 86 when he only had 49 points in 80 games. But I will take it. I just think Garland's going to be more effective in the top six. So I'm going to leave him there. He's kind of been putting up more points than Kempe. Tom Wilson, still 90 overall as well. I think he had 25 goals last season. Um, he was a huge part in us making the playoffs and going to the conference finals. Um, was really happy to acquire him. That's how the forwards are looking. Defense, we got Sanheim and Dougie Hamilton. Lindgren, Brant Clark, and Killington, Kalen Addison. Um, Addison, Ronnie Attard, and Clifton are all 80 overall. So they're kind of going to be fighting for that last spot. I thought I would give it to Addison just because um, he's been here longer. He's actually put up points in the past. Really surprised he hasn't grown, though. Started at 78, went to an 82, back to an 80. This contract we gave him, this four mil, four mil a year deal, I think it was a seven-year deal, hasn't really turned out. He's been kind of a bottom-pairing guy. Um, and in, in the pipes, we got Vili Husso. Um, looking to be our starting goalie for the remainder of this franchise mode. We have four years left. He's only 32. I'm hoping that he can be um, an elite goalie for us for the next couple seasons. I'm ready to go here. Hopefully season seven brings us some luck and we can get our way on to getting the Stanley Cup. All right, guys, we're here at the end of the season number seven with the Kansas City Huskies. As you can tell, really solid season. I think this might have been our most successful season yet um, in accordance to regular season. I don't know if we've ever we ever hit 100 points, so I think 99 may have been uh, our most here. As you can tell, we will be playing the Winnipeg Jets in round one um, of the playoffs. Should be a really interesting series. I think they still got, like, Shifley. I don't know if Wheeler will be there, but like Kyle Connor, uh, a couple other guys. We will go through uh, their team before we get going. As you can see here, uh, this is how the other divisions are looking. Vegas, Seattle uh, didn't qualify for the playoffs. To I don't want to say recent expansion teams anymore have been in the league. Vegas now looks like 10 years. Seattle about 7 or 8 seasons now. Um, pretty surprising Tampa Bay not making the playoffs here. wonder how many times that's actually happened um, in the seven seasons that we've gone through here. Washington finishing last. Um, I'm, I didn't really pay attention. Kind of curious who finished first in the league. So it was Ottawa. We did finish sixth overall. So I do think that we have a really good chance of making a run here again. Um, like I said, playing those Winnipeg Jets see where they finish in accordance to league standings not a top 10 team finishing 11th so it definitely will be a uh, really competitive series in my books seattle looking to get the first overall pick 10 points behind washington uh the second closest team matt savoie led our team in scoring after we signed him to a contract at almost nine million bucks was really hoping for him to take a jump and he did getting over a point per game one goal off of 40 Braden Yeager continuing to make steps Clem Cawson he's been here since day one have really liked him um, never really been a point per game guy and this was his best season yet as you can see with Kansas City he started in the minors the first year but I think has been a pretty solid player ever since um, never really thought about getting rid of him he's always kind of fit in he's played on the first line second line third line kind of like one of those utility guys uh, Ryan Johansson signed him in the offseason. Not too great of a season, but we were, were only really um, expecting like fourth line production out of him. And this is just kind of how the rest of our team did in accordance to points. Kasper Kapanen, um, hopefully he can pick it up in the playoffs here because if not, he will not be back um, after that disappointing season. Brant Clark. Seemed like he just needed a change of scenery. Really happy he was able to put up 38 points. He's only got 60 in his career, and 38 of them were this year. So that's really nice to see. Hopefully he continues to grow. 
uh, and become a number one D. Uh, we acquired Philip Hronick at the deadline. Um, thought that it was an important move. We sent Kalen Addison the other way and uh, Burmistrov, who was a 72 medium top six forward. Um, I believe is Hronick on the last year of this deal. No, he's got one more year at 6.4 after this. I kind of just acquired him... Um, thinking if we lose Dougie in the offseason he scored 25 22 goals but his overall is getting worse and it just depends how much money he wants so Hronick's going to kind of take place of him and then we'll move Clark up to the top pairing uh next season and our defense are looking pretty stacked at least for this playoff run Vili Husso uh seemed like he was the best offseason acquisition played in 70 games at 40 wins uh, great season for him. Finally got that solid goaltending we needed. 9-10 save percentage. Hopefully it can translate to the playoffs. The Dan Vladar not looking too great. And we'll take a look here at how the rest of the league um, did in accordance to scoring. I don't think Savoie will be close to the top at all. Dreisaitl again, just killing it out there. 26 more points than McDavid. Only played two more games. This guy is just insane right now. 126 points this season most not even the most actually that he's had in this franchise mode he's had 131 125 122 126 just crazy and he's got over 250 more points than games played can't believe that he's just stuck at a 95 overall though he's the best player it seems like the last couple seasons thomas shabbat once again it seems like every year we go and look through this guy and how many 100 point years he's had 93 overall Josh Norris also hit 100. Mitch Kov, nice to see him up there. 99 points, 49 goals. And William Eklund, surprising from the Sharks, grown to a 90 overall. 99 points this year. Just a breakout season for him, but he has been a really solid player, uh, it seems like, throughout his career on a really solid contract. Um, and who had the most goals in the league here? Drysdale, 70 goals. Not even close. He's probably going to be racking up those awards. Um, and good for him. Lucky to see that he can... Not lucky. It's good to see that he can do it without McDavid. They will be playing the Blues in round one. We're playing the Jets. And if we win, we'll get the winner of the Abs and the Stars. Uh, the Abs is the team that took us down in the playoffs a couple years back. That's kind of how the rest of the playoffs are looking. Like I said, really weird to kind of see Tampa not in there. Boston not in there. I was going to say Florida's not in there, but they are. They're playing those Leafs. Um, we've got the Battle of California on the West as well. Um, and only a couple Canadian teams in it. Three. Four, actually. So we got half, which isn't bad. Um, but we're hoping that Kansas City in our seventh year here can take home a Stanley Cup. Because um, that's what the fans of, can can fans of Kansas City want. Excuse me. Um... Tom Wilson, just an absolute tank for us since being acquired. I feel like since we acquired him, like the whole dynamic of the team's just been different. A bunch of guys have been growing. Um, and he's just, he's been a consistent player and he's been 90 overall the entire time. Not putting up like a point per game, but he's just been a physical force out there. Um, and it looks like game one is going to OT and the Jets are going to win 3-2. I think that said, I wasn't too sure. I went too fast. It may have been Ryan Strom. Um, and we are playing right the next day here again. Vili Husso could not get the job done in game one. Looked like he had a solid performance, though. So it's kind of hard to win when you only score two goals in this league. So we're hoping for a better outcome, and we don't want to go back. I was going to say, we don't want to go back down 2-0, but it's kind of looking like we do Pierre-Luc Dubois. Two goals in that first period. And a 5-3 loss to the Jets. Really disappointing. What are we going to do here? So we got five goals for eight against in the first two games. Jets are going back home to Winnipeg. They're up 2-0. And they're up 1-0 in this game so far. 3-0. 4-2 win for the Jets. I might see if I can shuffle the lines here because this is not looking good at all. We're on the brink of elimination after three games in such an incredible season. Really struggling to score goals. And it doesn't look like we're having too fun keeping them out of our net either. Um, giving up at least three goals in every game. Dougie Hamilton. 
just score on goals, man. This guy, I guess the Heat Seeker zone ability just really helps him out. And he does score a lot of goals in real life too, which is um, which is good for sure. I'm going to move Geeky up here. I don't think Kempe should be playing center. And Ronnie Attard is playing left wing for some reason. Clifton. We're going to have to call someone up. Ronnie Attard, defenseman, should not be playing second line left wing. Um, because that just is not going to help in the playoffs. Um, there's got to be someone in the minors we can use here. Probably should have looked at that before the series started. GM error. And that's probably why we're losing right now. And we just don't got a lot of options. But Austin Watson looks like he's going to come into the lineup uh, for game number four. And he will be playing on the fourth line. Either right or left wing. We'll see kind of what options we got here. I'm going to move Geeky up to the third line. And I think I might put Colton at center. So let's put Kempe there. We'll move Kapanen up. Celebrini can go here. And then Austin Watson will come in uh, for Ronnie Attard. And good thing he's only on the fourth line because that 76 overall is not going to match up well against these high-flying Winnipeg Jets, I will say. Um, take a look at the other series here before we get going for game number four. The Sharks look like they might sweep the Kings. Avs and uh, Stars are tied 2-2. Oilers and Blues are 2-2. Leafs are up 3-0. Some pretty interesting series, and we're, um, we're on the verge of elimination here. Hoping we can get a win, go back to Kansas City, and kind of just take it game by game here. 2-1 lead for the Jets. 3-2. And the series is over. Wow. Really disappointing outcome. Four games. We're done. I just, I just can't believe that. That's just crazy to me. What is going on here? This is really glitching out on me. Um, I'm not really too happy with this outcome, though. I kind of thought we had a team that was looking really good. Um, I only made that one deadline move for Hronik. And it, it, it just seems like it's it didn't work out. These guys didn't gel together. It's kind of like when you expect it to be good sometimes, it it doesn't turn out good. And then like two years two years uh, before, when I we kind of just squeaked into the playoffs, it's like you make a conference finals run. So it's just like you got it. You can get in. Anything can happen. Like we're the sixth ranked team in the NHL. Get swept in round one by the eleventh uh, team. Just crazy. It looks like the Sharks are also sweeping the Kings. Um, Leafs also sweep the Panthers. Be interesting to see here who can take home the Stanley Cup in the seventh season um, of this franchise mode. And the San Jose Sharks are Stanley Cup champions. And the salary cap's $103 million. That's just crazy because currently today it's, a, what, 82 and a half. So you got an extra $19 million to work with. Detroit jumping from 9-1 to one to get that first overall pick. Poor Seattle. It's crazy to see Tampa in, in the uh, in the lottery. Even Washington picking third. Wonder if they'll get like another o OV type player um, that can help turn their franchise around because it doesn't look like they're doing too great. Drew Doughty's career is over. Now coaching, wondering who he will take over, if it'll be the LA Kings after they got swept in round one, um, if they will go in a direction of bringing a player in. Sometimes that's a good option. Let's just take a look at the awards, and then we'll take a look at the playoff stats quickly. Senators win the President's Trophy. Dreisaitl racking up a couple awards here. Shabbat's got four straight Norrises. Just crazy. I can't believe that he's been this good. Like... I started him at an 89, like, good offensive stats because he's good offensive, but it wasn't, like, anywhere close to some some other guys, and it's just crazy how he's been taking over. Capper's off with back-to-back -back Lady Bings. Langdon on the Avalanche will go home with the Calder. Cole Eiserman uh, goes home with the Conn Smythe. And the Jets, Elias Sorokin is probably the reason we got swept in round one. Uh, couldn't score goals on this guy. And they did win the Stanley Cup last season, so it was a 
tough test for us for sure. Uh, Drag Asevic will win the Masterton. Jets coach wins coach of the year. Patterson goes home with the Selkie. And Dreisaitl wins the Lindsay and the Maurice Richard. I think that was four trophy trophies for him. Really happy Matt Savoy there. Looks like he jumps to a 91. That's just really good. Uh, really good for us, especially for a top line center. Going to be competing with the best. Noel Gundler on that on the um, Hurricanes, excuse me, has the most points. But Iserman will take home the uh, Colin Smythe. He did it in less games, too. Look, Ryan Suzuki up there. Kind of like meeting the same performance that Nick Suzuki had a couple years ago. Connor Bedard um, winning the Stanley Cup finally. I, I like I, I called it last season. I said I think these guys are gonna win because of this guy, and they did. And he had his worst statistical season in four years, and they were able to take it home. And they, but he had a really good playoff, and that's kind of what matters. Like what McKinnon said this year, you got to sacrifice it uh, for defense sometimes, and that's what gets the job done. I just thought that with Bedard, they were gonna be able to take it home eventually. Vyacheslav Volkov, medium elite goalie, eighty five, didn't even have. That great of a season, but had a really good playoffs. Piotr Kochikov on uh, Carolina, new goalie this year, played a couple games. Looked like he had a pretty solid playoff. And before we get going on next season, I actually do want to look at the bracket. I kind of forgot about that. See how everything went down. Carolina losing to the Sharks in the final. Avalanche going all the way to the conference final. Leaf sweep in the first two rounds and then losing in five in the conference finals. Pretty interesting playoffs. Oilers cannot get by round one. And I'm getting ready to go for next season here. We got a lot of decisions to make. We got some free agents. Um, sorry, some guys that are could potentially be walking out the door to become free agents. And um, it's, it's, there's some decisions to make. Like some guys like Kapanen, I don't think are going to be back. Just was really disappointed. Like only four goals. Like you gotta, you gotta produce a bit more than that. We've got Berkeley Martin here. We gotta sign. Um, right now it's only seven million cap space, but it depends if these guys go. Like Formanton, he didn't have really too great of a season. I, I don't know if um, I'm gonna bring him back, even though he is a high overall. Maybe let like Celebrini develop into that, replace him with a fourth liner. Because besides that, we have a decent squad. Ross Colton's been here since day one, but he's been kind of going downhill. So we'll see what we can do here. And we're getting ready for season number eight with the Kansas City Huskies. We've got three more seasons to try and get a cup. And let's hope we do it because I really don't want to go the first 10 years with no hardware. All right, guys, we're here at the beginning of season eight, 2028-2029 season uh our off season was pretty quiet uh only brought in a couple new guys just one guy uh was traded a couple walked out the door uh dougie hamilton was looking for like nine and a half million bucks i believe so we let him walk um our moves this off season uh we traded ross colton uh to but to boston sorry to buffalo straight up for jack quinn uh, Jack Quinn was an 84 when I acquired him. Uh, Colton was an 84 when I traded him. Quinn's much younger. Um, can score goals, but hasn't really shown it at the NHL level yet. Kind of hoping it's like a Brant Clark situation where he can come over and um, just start, it'll maybe just hopefully start clicking here. Um, was Thought it was definitely worth it. Got a little bit younger out of it. He is making a lower cap hit too with one year left. Um, so it's kind of like a trial. We can see if we want to resign at the end of the season. Um, see if we don't. So that was our only trade this off season. We signed Igor Chinnikov. Uh He was a rookie of the season in the NHL. He's now 27 here. Uh, Two-year deal, 2.7 million AAV. Hasn't really put up a ton of points in the NHL, uh, but he did have a really good playoffs with the Blue Jackets last year. 12 points in 14 games. He's going to start in the bottom six. Sammy Blay, kind of the same thing as Chinnikov, going to start in the bottom six. Signed to a one-year deal at $1.45 million. Um, he, he will probably start in the fourth line, maybe left wing or right wing. Going to bring that big body presence. Hopefully can score some goals. He's pretty uh, 
pretty skilled as well. Uh, Berkeley Martin, second line center right now, grown to an 87. Five-year deal, five and a half mil cap hit per season. Um, he's slowly been getting better every season. Grown to an 87 overall now, 49 points last year. Hopefully he can break out, maybe hit 30 goals. Uh, that would be really nice. Uh, Murat Husnadinov, we signed him to a one-year deal at $800,000. He's kind of going to be a 13th, 14th forward. Going to be a shutdown guy most likely. And uh, Brant Clark, he still has one more year left on his deal here, but we locked him into a four-year deal at $6.5 bucks. Uh, he had a really good season this year. He's had like two-thirds of his points in the NHL in one season last last year, and he will be playing on the top pair uh, with Sanheim this season. Uh, so I'm just going to go over to the lines and just show you kind of how I got it um, mapped out, and I'm really hoping that we can take... Uh, I don't want to... I, I, I don't want to say a step forward, maybe a step forward in the playoffs, but kind of hoping we finish the regular season like where we were last year um, and take a step forward uh, definitely in the postseason. This is how I got the lines uh, shaped up right now. Our first line's all not, at least 90 overall, which is really uh, nice to see. I think we got some pretty good depth in our lineup too. Uh, bringing in like a big body guy like Blay, I thought was pretty necessary. Uh, defense. Might have to upgrade on right D here, Connor Clifton. But you never know, a shutdown guy could do uh, really well in that role. Goaltending still staying the same. Um, I'm not really sure how Vili Husso dropped. Thought he had a really good season last year, the 9-10. And then he even had a 9-14 before that. Um, maybe was it, did he not have a great playoff probably, save percentage-wise? Like That's weird to me that he would drop, but because he, he did have a really good season. And save 9-10 is really good. Um, for this franchise mode save percentage, I'd say. Um, so Ty Nelson's also the other scratch. He was drafted. Uh, he was actually drafted to Seattle this year, but he was drafted by us in the second round. 22 has yet to consistently really break the NHL, but he will get opportunities to kind of fill in here, even for Clifton. Yeah, he was just kind of way too good for the A last year. Um, and he had five points in eight games the season before when he was called up. So I'm kind of hoping that he can grow Maybe into like a really solid bottom pairing guy. And uh, I'm really hoping that this season's going to go well. Because um, we've got a lot of expectations with only three seasons left to go. Um, and o only two playoff runs to really show for it. Alright guys, we're here at the end of season number eight. Uh, we finished in the second wild card spot. But as you can see, we had a really good division. We only had five less points than last season. Uh, the Minnesota Wild taking home uh, the division title. Um, the Edmonton Oilers finishing first in the NHL, and that's actually our opponent in round one, uh, facing the two-head monster in Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid. Curious to see how they ended up doing in points this year uh, because this could be a really tough matchup in round one. I do think we have a solid squad, but I'm, I'm looking... Looking forward to seeing what they... I know that we have a good squad, but to be honest with you, they might have a better one. Um, we will take a look. I'll just see... I'll, I'll go through their points and see how everyone did, and then we can kind of match it to ours. Matt Savoie was just a monster season. 108 points, like I said. Uh, he's just been getting better and better every year. Jaeger with 93. Is that the most he's had? It might be. It is. He broke the record by 14 points. Um, great that he's still growing. Clem Costin. Just been, like I said, a solid player for this team um, ever since we acquired him um, in the expansion draft eight years ago now. Vili Husso, really solid season. Again, save percentage is a little bit lower than last year's, but 32 wins, 18 losses. Thought he was pretty good. And even Dan Vladar. I was really considering him throwing in a couple trades, but... Not too bad for a backup goalie. Um, he will be an unrestricted free agent at the end of this season. Uh, Brian Clark, again, I think he had 35 points last year. He will have the same amount this year. Um, it's actually three less, excuse me. I'm uh, really hoping that he can grow a bit more. He's down to a medium top 4D. Uh, hopefully that $6.5 million we paid him won't be too much. Philip Pronick acquired him at last year's trade deadline. Just been a solid player for us. 16 points in 19 games last year um, and 55 points this season uh, for your Kansas City Huskies. 
Uh, let's take a look at the league stats. Wondering if, um, look at Shabbat again, probably taking home his fifth straight Norris. If Dreisaitl, he didn't actually win this time. It's going to be McDavid. Hopefully McDavid will get the heart. Matthews almost at a, at a goal a game. 78 goals in 82 games. He's got 674 on his career. Uh, probably going to break Wayne Gretzky's 894 uh, goals, considering that Matthews is only 31 years old. Mitchkov, another monster season from him. He's on the wild. Uh, just scrolling over to see if Bedard's anywhere close. Haven't seen him. Actually, he's right there. 51 goals again, 99 points. This seemed like it was just a really high-scoring season, and that's probably a reason why Vili Husso's save percentage is a little bit lower. Uh, but I am happy with a 905. Jasper Bratt's now on the Edmonton Oilers as well. Uh, that definitely, they have a really scary team taking a look at it. They got Kempe, former um, Husky last season. Gabe Landeskog decides to leave um, the Avalanche to come to the Oilers. Carter Savoie, one of their young prospects right now. Uh, he's grown quite nicely. Josh Stone, um, Cameron Allen, young player looking to get drafted in the 2023 draft. Um, Oilers are looking pretty good. I'm going to take a look at their goaltending because that might be their one weakling, and I don't think it is. Jake Ottinger, 907 with 43 wins this year. Uh, it looks like he didn't have a great playoffs last year, but um, you never know this year. They're the, they're the top-ranked team. We're really hoping we can take them down because uh, we had a solid season, and it just sucks we got landed with the uh, – number one overall team this is how the playoffs are looking this year the playoff bracket excuse me no tampa again looks like we're drawing the oilers obviously the abs and wild some of the same teams as last year same first round in la san jose la looking for revenge there uh, the leafs are playing the sabers and i'm really hoping uh, that we don't end up getting swept this year because that wouldn't be too good and we only got two more years left to do this thing after this season and we're already in the dance, so we may as well make uh, make some impact here and kind of make a name for ourselves and hopefully bring home the cup. And that's a good start. Uh, couldn't get a win last playoffs. Got one here in game one on the road. I saw Klim Koss in there scored in the third period. Pretty clutch player. And I'm really surprised that EA this year is doing, it seems like game one and two and five and six in every series are back-to-backs which is super strange because it does not really happen in the NHL. I think the last time was in the bubble um, just because there was essentially no travel at all. So um, players kind of had more time just to go back to the hotel and rest. Um, and I think the only back-to-back -back this year was um, Tampa, Florida, game three and four because there was a concert in Tampa um, the Saturday night and they couldn't, uh, they couldn't space the games out two days. Game two here, hopefully going back home with a 2-0 series lead. Uh, McDavid scoring again, of course, in the first period, dry sidle. And unfortunately, uh, we lose game two. But I can't lie, I'm pretty happy we got a win, especially in game one. Uh, you got to take one of, two, one of two on the road is kind of always the mentality um, for the away team starting in a series. And we did that. Um, so we're coming home here, hoping we can stop McDavid and dry sidle. Keep McDavid, I don't want to say off the score sheet, but maybe not from some score and some goals. But who knows? He could just put up five assists and just completely prove me wrong. And um, maybe, I don't maybe he didn't, but we kept him off scoring here. Uh, Ryan Lindgren's going to get the game winner for the Huskies in a 3-2 to two, uh, win in Game 3. Game 4 is very crucial. Um, hoping to take a 3-1 series lead and kind of make the Oilers lose the hope of winning this series uh, being the best team in the NHL potentially being out in round ones probably not something that they want and uh, they're going to be fighting hard and a 2-1 lead for us in the first still 2-1 3-3 game 4 is going to overtime and this is a huge overtime and the Oilers are going to win it and tie the series and that's that's definitely a hard one to swallow. We kind of had that. I don't want to say in the palm of our hands, but it was 2-1 going into the third. Um, and we're losing 4-3 to three in OT. Going back to Edmonton, they kind of got the advantage here, having 2-3 of three at home. 
and both teams here are one and one on the road. Tom Wilson getting us going uh, late in the first period. McDavid also opening the scoring in the game. Landis Cobb, Dreisaitl, and the Oilers are going to take a 3-2 series lead over our Kansas City Huskies and puts us on the brink of elimination. Uh, we do got to win two games in a row here. Sammy Blay will be injured. Um, it's only two games, but we just got to take it one at a time. Teams have come down from 3-2 before, uh, but usually I'd, I'd say it's probably like a 72% chance that the Oilers are winning. I think it was around there I saw um, the winner of Game 5 will win the series. And we're going to OT again. Frank Nazar and the Oilers will win uh, in overtime and take round one. And another first round exit two seasons in a row. And just thinking now when I just saw Frank Nazar's name, I forgot to tell you guys earlier in this small clip, our trade deadline uh, we traded Connor Geeky. He was an 82 medium top six forward. Uh, we traded him to Chicago uh, straight up for Frank Nazar, who was an 85 high top six forward. I'm not really sure why Chicago accepted that deal. They had a lot of centermen, uh, but I just really wasn't happy with Connor Geeky's production. So I just decided I'd throw him out there, see um, see if any there'd be any takers, essentially. And uh, we got Nazar in return two guys that just went in the draft this year um but i do think nazar is the better player and then we traded ryan johansson and a 2029 second rounder uh to vegas for jesperi kakaniemi who's an 81 and owen pickering who's an 82 medium top 4d i uh, thought those guys could help us out kakaniemi is an unrestricted free agent now at the end of this season uh owen pickering I think he's a free agent, but he's restricted, and he's pretty young, only about uh, 24 years old. And it looks like the Sharks, again, will sweep um, the LA Kings, which is crazy. We were offered another contract here, and we will stay with the Huskies. Um, offered for four years, but it seems like we're only going to do uh, two, because I only set it to a 10 years long. I thought it was that's a fair amount of time to try and win a cup. And the playoffs are over now. Minnesota Wild are Stanley Cup champions. So Connor Bedard wins last year. Matt Vemichkov wins this year. Uh, good for those two guys. I'd say most definitely going 1-2 and two in the draft in 23. Uh, the Oilers going all the way to the conference finals game 7. Losing to the Wild. Leafs again. Another conference finals appearance. Losing to the Rangers. Um... But I can't believe the Kings two years in a row swept by the Sharks. That's pretty crazy. Battle of California. Kings fans would not be happy with that at all. They should definitely hire Drew Doughty as a coach if they haven't already. Uh, Mats have lost six assists in that playoffs. No goals, though, which is kind of disappointing. And Marco Rossi or Mitchkov looks like one of those two is going to be taking home the con Smythe. Uh, Dreisaitl just tearing it up as well. Victor Olofsson on the wild. Kaprizov is our fourth leading scorer. That's just pretty crazy. I wonder what he's at now. Jesper Wallstead just leading this team at 26 years of age. Finally gets them a cup. I'm going to see what overall Kaprizov is. I'm kind of curious what he is, how old he is at this point. He's 32, still at a 94 overall. Just absolutely killing it out there. All right, guys, thanks for watching this long episode. I thought I would kind of put both seasons in one, and the next episode will be the last one of the Kansas City franchise mode. I'll do season 9 and 10 together. Uh, two disappointing first-round exits. Um, I'm hoping to make some better moves this offseason. Maybe there'll be some more guys that I've never really thought of trading that I'd be really open to trading uh, because something's not really going right here, and there's a, there's got to be a reason that we're not getting past the first round. Um, and I'm hoping to address that, and hopefully we can make some damage in the last two seasons. Guys, thank you very much for watching once again. Please like and subscribe, and we'll be back with the last season of the Huskies franchise mode.